And at this point, I would like to introduce uh, our beloved mayor, Mayor Frank Saverino. Mayor Saverino is the founder owner of Saverino and Associates, a food vending service. For those of you who did not know that, he served on the fire district board for four years, as a trustee for six years, and has served as a mayor for 11 years. Uh, Frank has resided in Carroll Stream for 44 years with his lovely wife, Bobby, and they both contribute mightily to the success of this, uh, of this village. Uh, really needs no other introduction. Frank? Thank you. I don't, like, I don't like the mic. Can you hear me back there, Chief? Okay, as long as you can hear me in the back. I got to work there for oh, Can't get away from the mic. Okay. <laughs> Usually I never want to put it down once I pick it up. I want to thank everybody for being here. And I really feel bad about starting off with Joe Kramer passing, but I wouldn't have it any other way when Mr. McNeese came in and told me I could cry, to be honest with you, because everybody that knows Joe Kramer knows that he is a class act all the way. I'm looking forward, I'm looking forward to seeing him on Friday on the betting hole. You know, and the, he always took that shot and gave us the shot, and we're gonna miss him. There's, there's a humanitarian there that a lot of us didn't really get to know. And it's a shame because he's a great guy. And I said to Joe when he, when he found out, Joe says I could visualize him walking by with a case of beer on his shoulder on a Thursday night for the Rotary to try and raise money for scholarships. And he's got a cigarette dangling from his lips because he's away from the food. And that, that's Joe Kramer. Joe Kramer gave back a lot of his life. And uh, for that, I feel bad that he's passed. So we're here today to talk about the state of the village. We're going to change this around a little bit. You know, uh, it's not quite the same as what we've had in the past. Uh, we want to give you some reasons why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, Monday night's meeting, we took a little heat, which I like. Now heat don't bother me. You know, we put uh, a four cent gas tax on to try and raise some money. We've had some people leave the village. Well, they didn't actually leave. They're they're building department may have left, but they didn't leave. And uh, the state's taken away a lot of our money. And every time we go through the budget process, just when staff just about gets ready to say we're done, the state finds a way to take more money away or changes things around, so we have to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, so some of the things that we've done on your table, you'll see some of the uh, peer comparisons. We're, we did that, we never done that before. We wanted you to see where all of the people that are around us are at. When I say all the people, all the towns, what they charge for uh, sewer, what they charge for water. Uh, we didn't put the gas tax on there because some towns have had gas tax and property tax forever. We've never had, well, to my knowledge, we, I've never paid a property tax since I lived in Carroll Street. So that's been 44 years or so. I guess at the beginning you might have paid something. I don't. I don't know. So, but I mean, we we don't do it. We have no debt. We have no bond rating because we don't borrow money. We pay as we go, and we learn to live within our means. When the bottom dropped out of the economy in 2007, we sucked it up like everybody else should have, and uh, we didn't replace people when they should have been replaced, and we learned to work within our means. And here we are today, we're still working within our means. We didn't go out when things got better and go crazy hiring people. Our police department stepped up over and over again, public works. And I mean, to me, it's, it's about community. I'm, I'm the most fortunate guy in the world to have a staff that I have that works for us. From, from Joe to public works to community development to, I mean, I am lucky. And, and to have a board that I have and they're all here except for one, and the only reason he's not here is Greg Swarzy, because he's a fireman and he's on duty today, otherwise he'd be here. But for me to look around and see they came from their jobs to come here to be with us for this day, very important day for us to, to be able to tell the community where we're going. So I kind of jumped around, I do that all the time. Usually, Joe usually reels me in. Okay, so we lost the sales tax, from major retailers, Office Depot. We never did this before. But we're gonna let you know why we're doing what we're doing and you need to know who it is. Uh, Village Market closed. That was the uh, supermarket over in Geneva. But Office Depot didn't go any place. They just changed their billing. That was about, no, 
November. I don't want to give you the number, but it was a big, a big number. And we didn't even know it was going to happen. So Itasca ends up with the income, and the mayor in Itasca is like the smartest guy in the world. He didn't even know it was coming his way, because they have a branch there too. And it's all about how they do their billing and how they do if it's electronic, if it's done on the internet, if it's done however they did it. They moved it out of our village, but left everything else for us to work with. So when they have a problem, our police department will go in and take care of that problem with them. We'll plow their streets and we'll do everything. But we get nothing out of them. Without having property tax, we get anything out of them. We get nothing from them. So I mean, except now we got to take care of them even though we get nothing from them. And that was a huge number that we lost and it's almost impossible to make that up. So new collection fees from the state of Illinois. Well, first they took, was it well, the 2% is what they're charging us to give us back our money. I mean, I never heard of nothing like this in my life. I mean, they're gonna charge us 2% to give us back our money. Then they took 10%, the state reduced the income tax money that we received, 10%. I mean, think about this. If you could run your business the way they run the state, we'd all be billionaires. I mean, they just keep taking it away from everybody else if they only knew what to do with it. But the bottom line, when, when you look at it, resulting in a $2.6 million loss in revenue for us. We have no way to make that up unless we do nickel and dime, don't, don't hire when we need to hire. Gave a few police cars up that should have been bought. Public Works is, and, and again, I'm gonna jump around a little bit because everybody's feeling it. Public Works is rebuilding trucks rather than buying them. I mean, we found ways of saving money that it's a little painful, but Phil goes out of his way. Public Works Department go out of their way, rebuild the truck. You don't have to buy a new truck. We're six miles long and a mile and a half or two miles wide. How many miles can you put on anything? It usually just gets old, rusted out, and the chassis are usually still good or the boxes are still good, but they found a way to do it. We're retrofitting lights with the company in Carroll Street. We keep doing things to try and save money. It's painful at times, but it is what it is, and we're forced to do what we do. So consumed budget surplus, 1.5 million budgeted surplus. Uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> disseminated by revenue losses. I mean, uh, no transfer of capital improvements to the capital improvement fund. I mean, we can only do what we got to do. I mean, we've always taken money that we've had extra and put it in capital improvements so we can stay ahead when Jim Knutz and our, our village engineer and Bill Cleveland come and say, we want to do uh, another $3 million worth of road work or $8 million worth of road work, they've had the money to be able to do it. And, and, and I've questioned them at the beginning, it's either do it now and spend 400000 on the street or do it later and spend a million four hundred thousand. So we do it and stay ahead of the curve. That's why our roads in the, in the industrial park and in the village are in such good shape. Thanks to engineering department for keeping up on that. So FY18 cuts uh, and deferments $1.4 million. Uh, positions kept vacant for hiring deferred. Didn't hire anybody when we had to. Uh, in some cases we had to, we had no choice, but where we could not have to, we didn't do it. Uh, equipment rehabs, purchase the lake. Two police cars I just mentioned. I'm, I'm about one step ahead of you on this, on this but I'm, I'm gonna catch up. You're gonna catch up to me. Reduced training, I mean, we used to send people away to do all kind of training stuff. We just want to look at the cost and what they come back with. We just have to hold off on it. Delayed building improvements. I mean, uh, reduced uh, community support and programs and it breaks my heart and it breaks my board's heart because we don't have the money to give that we did before. And uh, one, of, one of the things, and I wrote on the Meals on Wheels truck, I've gone in to people that needed it with the driver we don't have any money to give them this year. We can't give them the $10,000 that we give them every year. It breaks my heart. My board don't like it either. None of us like it. I mean, those of you that know what we're doing, we're doing 50-50 raffles on a Thursday night concert to try and give the food banks money back so they can, they can keep going. I mean, we gave a lot back this year, but it's a lot of extra work for people that are out there on their own time to do it. And you just do what you have to do, that's all. So. Our finances, uh, village, the, the fiscal year is ended April 30th. 
Revenue 26.4 million, expenses 26.2, we got a surplus of 200,000. Sounds like a lot of money, but it really isn't a lot of money. Uh, no transfer to the capital improvement fund, which is a killer because that's where we keep building, and then you can then you can spend it as you need it. FY19 uh, budget draft 1.56 million deficit. We're not used to that, but it is what it is. Continued cuts and deferment necessary. Uh, delay hiring of two police officers. Thank you to the chief and the staff that's back there. I know that that bothers everybody because I like living in the safe village. I like watching the magazines give us those awards for being one of the top villages and maybe in the top 50 or top 100 in the whole United States for being safe to live in. Uh, delayed purchase in the police cars, reduced training, reduced pre uh, plannings. I mean, the things that we did, the tree plannings, we, we put almost $2 million in trees or a little over 2 million with the ash problem. And now we're not putting anything out. Uh, reduced community support programs, like I said, the 10,000 is a killer, not to give it to Meals on Wheels. Uh, delayed facility improvements and more. It's about $650,000. Property tax discussed, that came up in our meetings several times. We've gone through all these, I mean, meeting after meeting after meeting that we had for the last probably six months. And it kept coming up and it kept going away kept coming up and it kept going away. The easy way out would have been put a property tax on. Simple. We can make the vehicle stickers go away. We can make a lot of things happen. I watched Schomburg do it, put a property tax on, vehicle stickers went away, they paid for the garbage and come out $22 million, if I think the number was. Ahead. And the people think it was a great deal. And it's like, I'm trying to figure that out. I don't think our people in this town are that stupid that they would think that would be a great deal. They paid all that property tax just to lose a, a $15 or $20 vehicle sticker and have a, a $30 garbage bill picked up and pay seven or $800 more every year back to the village. So that wasn't even on the table. It kept coming up, but it kept going away. Now, I'm not going to say it's going to go away forever because we can only do what we do for a certain period of time before it catch up even with us. Home rule sales tax increased by a quarter of a point was something that we had to do. The rate remains the same or lower as seven of the 10 of our peers. That's why we put those papers on the table so you can see where we are versus where they are. Motor fuel tax to four cents a gallon. We kicked that around. We started with a penny, went to two cents, three cents. Might as well do four, get it over with. I think that by accident with what President Trump has done, with Iran, if the price of gas goes up, the four cents of the winter, and nobody will even notice the four cents is in there because they're talking about going up 20 or 30 cents a gallon. So what's 34 cents a gallon if you're going to go up that high? Besides, uh, they charge us for the gas. No matter what the price is, we have to pay for it. So, I mean, you can shop for it, but I won't drive 40 miles to save three cents or four cents. So. Uh, all the proceeds from that four cents will go into our road work, where we can keep our roads and our curbs and the salt that we throw, and this was a killer year for us. I know, thank God we're on the programs that we're on, and Phil has got us on a joke with the programs with the county, and we buy enough salt, and we book enough salt, and two years ago, we had the towns that were calling me, asking me if we could give them salt, because they didn't prepare the way we prepare, and they have spent a lot of money for salt. Once your allotment runs out, there is no, there is no, nobody cares anymore. You're gonna pay whatever the gold market is. They don't care what you're gonna do next year. Water and sewer rates. We increased uh, 90 cents per thousand gallons. It's about $5.40 a month is what it should cost the average household. Uh, proceeds can only be used for water and sewer systems. I mean, we're constantly, Brian, what did the truck cost us we bought? 200 and how much? Uh, just over $300,000. Just over $300,000. So we can suck the sores out and we can make sure that the culverts are clean. And I mean, I mean, it, it, nothing's cheap. I mean, I look at that truck and it's magnificent. That truck is magnificent. But if you look at it and you look at all the work that's been done around Armstrong Park and all the work that they do to keep the all, all of the drainage clear, we really had a lot of rain. We really got lucky. I mean, I think we got lucky because we got smarter in what we do and how we spend the money and, 
and to keep things done the right way. It would have been that probably around Armstrong Park, if it wasn't for the reservoir and for all the work that was done, we'd have had a lot of houses flood again through all that rain that we had. Village finances, general corporate fund budget, 2018-19, projected revenue, 27.66 million, projected expenditures, 27.22. Hopefully we'll have a $445,000 surplus. Again, it sounds like a lot of money, but it really doesn't come out to be that much. Uh, general corporate fund, you can see where we get our money from, income tax, uh, utility tax, which goes down and, and again, every time somebody gets rid of their landline, that we lose money? That's correct. Do you get that? So everybody wants to use their cell phones and get rid of them. My wife wanted to get rid of the landline. I said, can't do that. Even if we don't use it, can't get rid of it. Because if enough people get rid of it, that 12% will go away. We don't want that to go away. So you could use them cell phones, but get out for your house, but it doesn't help us at all. Uh, sales tax, you can see that's 46.3% of our, of our total income that we have that comes in. Sales tax is very important to us. Flip the page. Water and sewer fund, uh, aging water systems equal to increased maintenance. Schmail Road water main, $2.7 million. North Avenue sanitary sewer rehab, 770,000. Automatic meter reading systems, aging. We looked at that system. I'm gonna stop right there for a minute. If, what amazes me is going down Schmale. We wanna put new water mains in and we had people that wouldn't let us put the water main in to give us the easement rights. We're trying to make it better for them, to make it flow better so they don't have a problem down the road. They'd be the first people to complain after they had a problem and the last people to wanna help us. And it's like, I, I actually went out and talked to a few myself and said, I don't want you to call me, I don't want you to call anybody, because if you don't want us to fix this now, we're gonna put the pipes in under the ground, put the grass back down, and you won't even know they're there, but you'll be, you'll have a better, better property. They don't get it. I mean, it, it, it amazes me sometimes what they think of, like we're, we're not like spying on them underground. This is not under, this is not <laughs> spying. We're trying to make it better for them, and we got the money to spend to do it, and they still fight us, and, and especially at that end of time. Uh, let's see where we are. May 1st, combined rate increase of uh, 90 cents to uh, 11.97 a thousand gallons. Cost impact to the average customer is about $5.40 a month. One of the lowest water rates in DuPage Water Commission. I sit on a commission. I've been a water commissioner since 2007. I was there when we had a deficit of I don't even want to tell you because I, when I went on that board, I came back after two meetings and begged Joe, get me an attorney and get me out of there because it's a travesty what's happening in there. People were appointed that should have never been appointed. People were running the water commission that had no business running a, a, a utility that size, had no idea what they were doing. I wasn't sure if they were drinking or what the problem was. There was a major problem and we were bleeding two million a month and nobody seemed to care about it. They were more concerned about how much a $40 box of coffee cost than the two million a month we were losing. And I said, get me out of here because this is, this is going down big time. Turned it around, I'm the only one left on that commission. And, and again, I'm gonna thank Jim Zay because Jim Zay is, is and everybody knows Jim Zay is District 6, lives in Carroll Stream. It's a great asset for us. Jim Zay is the chairman. I'm the only survivor out of that whole board of six mayors and six of the appointed people that were in there plus the chairman, and I'm proud to be there. Everyone else was told to resign, and I told them, get handcuffs and get me out of there because I ain't gone. I didn't create the problem. We got to fix the problem, and they left me there, and the problem, I didn't fix it by myself, but I played a big part in, as a business person trying to understand. There's been a big fallacy here. Most of you are in business. It's money in and money out. You get money in, you got money going out. You can raise your prices on what you sell. You want to get more for cars, you raise the price, and you, then you can figure out what you want to do next. You want to do, do your building. Well, this is the same thing. We got money in and we got money out. We can't spend more money than we got coming in. And when Joe and the, and the staff at John Daytech Finance says, we only got this much coming in, 
You think the board sits there and says, we got to spend $2 million more than what we got coming in. That's stupidity. That doesn't even make any sense. I mean, really. You wouldn't do that in your business. Why would we do it here? Because the state does it doesn't mean we have to do it. So you can see the water rates. I mean, we're, we raised where we had to. Of course, the city of Chicago has figured it out that uh, the Arabs got all the oil and Chicago's got the water. So, I mean, that's where we get our water from. And whatever they charge us, that's what we have to pay. So when they pass an increase on, it was in the past. If they passed on 25 cents, we passed on 25 cents. That don't work. They pass on 25, we should go up 27 or 28. We need to go up a little bit more because it's going to keep changing. And if we want to keep our infrastructure, that's what we have to do. We don't have a choice. Do we like it? No. I'd like to make the same thing. But it doesn't work that way. Capital Improvement Fund, uh, infrastructure maintenance, 10.6 million. Roadways, bike paths, village facilities, stormwater systems. Funded by reserves, no debt, no debt, no debt. I'm proud to say that thanks to my board and the staff that we have here. After 11 years, we still don't have any debt. Revenue and reserves are uh, unsustainable. Uh, federal and state funding, unlikely. I don't look for them for anything. Uh, whatever we get, we're lucky. Uh, fewer grants and more unfunded mandates. I, and I use the unfunded mandates as a simple way of saying, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna tell my wife, I want you to go out and get me a brand new car. I want a 50 inch TV set. I want you to get all new furniture and change the landscapers and I want everything redone. And she says to me, where's the money gonna come from? Not my problem, you run the house. And that's what Springfield does to us. They tell us what we have to do never tell us where the money's going to come from. They take the money away and tell us how to run our village. I don't want anybody to tell me how to run this village. I've got a good board and I've got a good staff. We know what we need to do here. We know our residents and we know our businesses. I don't need any help from them because they don't give us any help. They just create more work for us. You notice there's no elected officials in this room other than ours. Usually the senators or the state reps would show up and want to take advantage of this. Only they don't want to answer the questions because they're too hard for them to answer. New revenue passed is four cents a gallon for motor fuel tax. We got a lot of heat on, on uh, Monday night about that, but it's, it is what it is. Uh, proceeds can only be used for the roads. Didn't I do this already? Yeah, this is like, oh, like repetitious or what? Okay, we want to really make it sink in. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Four, four of the ten pairs have a motor fuel tax. And, you know, it was funny because the people that came in to complain from the gas stations, and I get it, I understand that business. We do a lot of convenience store business, my personal business, all around the country. We're in 21 states, I think, now that we cover with salespeople all over the place. And I get it, I understand their business. They work on pennies. They got to understand our business. We work on pennies too. I mean, they can keep raising the price of gas, but we raised four cents and they thought it was absolutely terrible. We didn't, they didn't say nothing about us getting rid of our gas pumps and buying all our gas in Carroll Stream. We buy a lot of gas. Buy a lot of gas for our trucks from, uh, from public work. It's a lot of gas for the police department. That's all money that they had that they didn't have before, that they're complaining about. But they don't say the good things. When they wanted alcohol in the gas stations, we looked at it, Maybe that's not such a good idea. It doesn't really mix. It's like, you know, but you know what? After talking to them and, and seeing some of their books and being a businessman, I could look at the books and understand, you can only steal so much even if you got cash. I'm making a lot of money, so let's give them the alcohol. We talked about it, the staff agreed, the board agreed, we let them have the alcohol. Restaurants, the same thing. They wanted gambling. We don't have gambling. Glendale Heights, I think, put it, put gambling in. Why Chicago tried, the people shot it down. I looked at books of some of the restaurants that were open with me. Understand I know the food business. I don't know how you could work that many hours. I did it when I was in the food business. It was, it was ugly. That's why I got out of the food business. You work all them hours for, for, for what you're making. It's not even worth going to work. You're better off going to work at McDonald's or someplace than, than owning your own restaurant and killing yourself in it. 
So we let them have the gambling. What do you see happen? Outdoor seating, no more complaints. I mean, they're making money and everybody's happy. And we've kept it down. No Bettys, no Judys, no Mikeys, no nothing. It's the restaurants that are in town that hire the people, that hire the uh, the waitresses and the and the chefs and the people who work there. We kept it for them first. First right of refusal for the gambling. They've got a clean operation and nobody with a police record. It's easy. Get a liquor license and then we'll talk about the gambling. And if you look at some of the things that have come out of that, I mean. Uh, I, I don't even know what our number is. I used to look at it every month. I couldn't put that down because it's it's open to the public. If you go to their website for the state and you can see exactly how much goes through those machines and how much everybody gets. But for us, it's been, it's been added money that we never had before. But it's really helped the restaurants that were able to put it in, hire more people, expand the outdoor seating, bulldogs at uh, the old flip-flops at Manhattan's, and I can keep going on. I mean, now instead of maybe just barely making it, they're making a few bucks and they're putting it back in to their businesses. I just talked to 277000 That's what we get back on gambling. That's 5%. We get five. Everybody else, they split all the rest of the money up. We do all the work, but they get we get 5%. But I'm happy with 277 if that's 277000 to help pay the police department for police, for public works, and for everything that we do. See why I got them up here? Oh, Tia, you, who just looked that up? John's oh, John, my finance guy. We're still trying to figure out some things we're working on. So I, I think you kind of like get the point what we're, what we're doing here. Okay, flip it again. We got, what's the next thing? Municipal center renovation. This is something I mean that we talked about. I mean, this was another one of them deals. What do we do? Do we borrow the money or do we pay for it? Okay, what do we get in our money? We get a quarter of a point. We're lucky if we get a half a point. I don't know what it's up to now. Jen, where are we at now? About 2%. Point? 2.0. 2.0. So we could borrow the money at what? If we wanted to borrow of 19 million. <coughs> Ballpark figure. Three. Got any bankers in here? No bankers? Okay. How much? Over three. Over three. Or do we pay cash for it? Wasn't even a question. There's no no one in anybody's mind will pay cash. Why should we wait? And at the time we started this project, we weren't getting 2%. We're lucky to be getting one. So what do we do? Do we pay it off? Or do we borrow the money and, and pay interest? Pay it off. That was the way it came down. $19 million. Never had a bar hollow nickel of that money. Took it right out of our reserves. Brings our reserves way down. But again, that was the, what the board felt and what staff recommended, and that's what we followed. <coughs> the peer comparisons. One in ten with, with municipal property tax or debt on the average. Our peers get 23% of their revenue from property taxes. Now think about that. 23% of what they get comes from property taxes that we don't have. And yet we stay up with them and we don't have debt. And most of them have a big bond rating because they borrow a lot of money to build things. New sales tax rate, uh, the same or less than seven of our 10 peers at the quarter, a quarter of a point, uh, home new sales tax. Effective July 1st, 2018, 2016 expenditures per capita were $691, second lowest of 10 of our peers. That sheet's on the table for you to take with you so you can see what we're doing and how we do it and what we have to work with. Uh, water and sewer is still uh, the lowest, <laughs> third lowest out of 24 water commission companies we're the third lowest, and some of them charge almost double for the water that we pay for, that we actually all buy for the same rate from the Water Commission. It doesn't matter how much Naperville buys, they don't get a deal by buying more. We're charter members in the Water Commission, so we basically all pay the same price. If you're not a charter member, and there is some companies that came in later, some towns, I should say, to come in later, pay one and a half times what we pay, but we laid all the money out. The charter members put the money out. They took the chance. I wasn't here then. I can't take any credit for that. But I, I look back at our forefathers and 
I look at what they did. They saw that coming where the wells would go bad. I mean, you look at some of the dumps that they had out here from Kerr McGee and the White Farm, and I mean, some of the stuff that they found, vinyl chloride in the water that they were drinking from the wells. They had the foresight to put the pipes in and spend the money to get into that. And thank God that they did, because we use a lot of water, and we have a lot of water supply for our industrial park because we're on Lake Michigan water. Above average 2016 police pension fund status. You know, state average is 57.9% 50, funded. Uh, we're at 59.4. I don't even I don't even know what the state is at. I think they're I don't know, maybe a hundred and some billion dollars in pension fund money behind. But they said it's all gonna straighten out. Probably in about 70 or 80 years, I'll get it all figured out. None of us will be alive to see that, and that's why you want to make it a long way away so nobody can ever come back and question you. <laughs> New businesses recruited. Uh, this is a little different. We usually emphasize this. This is not, you know, we got the Wood Spring Suites Extended Stay Hotel with the size of the industrial park being 22, 20 plus million square feet. We have a lot of big companies that bring people in long term. Uh, it works good if you have a fire or a flood or whatever where you have to go someplace and spend a month rather than and not to knock the holiday in. It's a beautiful place to come for the weekend and enjoy the pool. But if your house burns, you couldn't stay here for three months. Your insurance company wouldn't cover the, the cost. So that's where you would end up at. And with uh, CDH, thank God for CDH, we looked the first time we looked at an extended stay hotel was because of Pearl Time Therapy. You gotta come in for a whole month. For 15 minutes, 15 minutes a day, whatever it takes to get the pro time therapy. So extended stay hotels have a place for everybody. So that was one of the reasons why we approved that and put it in. That'll be right on Gary Avenue, uh, just north of Lee's Road. Completion expended. It's supposed to be ex uh, about September. It should be done. Uh, Bucky's Express gas station. We've been talking about this for four years. I mean, we finally got the it all tore down. The old. Uh, Restaurant is gone, you know, where uh, Colonel Sanders used to be, and then it was the beef stand after that, and then it was nothing. You know, and it's, uh, it's kind of weird because this is an interesting one. Since everything been torn down on that corner, I was told that the restaurant that's right there, I had dinner last night at a fundraiser that I work with a lot of the different businesses, and the Chaco group that I run with that we raise money all the time, said that their sales are up between 10 and 15 percent since the building went down. And apparently because people could see it now when they're driving down Army Trail Road or when they're coming down uh, County Farm going south. Now they can see it where they didn't see it before. Once you see it and you're past the driveway, you aren't going to make a U-turn on County Farm or drive around in the neighborhood and come back. So it's sight is what it is. So. After talking to them yesterday, and I'm not going to say, I'm going to talk to the people that are going to be putting the sign up there. Maybe we need to change and look at what we do as far as signage, and maybe make it where the, the businesses that are paying the bill, maybe we need to make some exceptions once in a while. I know Joe doesn't like when I do this, but I mean, you know, not everything is what it, what it was five years ago or 10 years ago. If we don't start looking ahead to what we need, I don't even want to look at him right now. He's probably making face. <laughs> <laughs> Usually he reels me in. He don't want to. He don't want to embarrass me by reeling me in. I can see it. And John's watching every move. Look at John. John, relax. Take it easy. I mean, I mean, it isn't what it was. It's not our grandfather's business anymore. It's not like it used to be. The state's not the same. It's, we sit in meetings and we talk in our meetings and stuff. And it's like this is different. It's just not the same. We're not in. We're not in the same world we were in five years ago, 20 years ago. Anybody ever snort? Oh, I don't want to get into that one. Oh my God, please. Anybody tie, tie and soap? I don't remember doing that when we were kids. I just don't remember that stuff. I don't want to get into the snort one. You know what I'm talking about. I still think that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. You gotta read the newspaper. I spent two hours in the morning reading everything I could before I step out that door so I'm ready. It's like, sometimes I don't wanna step out, I'm not sure if I'm ready. So Bucky's Express is going in there. It's a gas station, convenience store, car wash. 
And with the four cents a gallon, what, what does that do? That's gonna be phenomenal for us. I look at pilot, we got a lot of heat and a lot of pressure by putting it in there. They'd rather see a broken down bowling alley that was empty with prostitutes working behind there making money than seeing something nice go up there. People fought us and fought us and fought us and they didn't even know it's there. I mean, that's how things change. Would we have liked to stay the bowling alley? Rick Geezer, my kids grew up in the bowling alley. Was it Gala Lanes or whatever? Of course, it was a, there was a lot of drugs done in there. I know Rick, you never done it. My kids never done it, right, Rick? Nope. Yeah. But I mean, you look at it and, and it's planning, it's planning. We've got a great community development department. We got great, great engineers. We got great public works. We got, I'm lucky to have, I, you know what? I'm lucky to have Joe on my team. I am the luckiest mayor around. The respect that people show for Joe and his ability to be able to reel me in or our board in <laughs> is amazing because we sometimes make our mind up and he has a way of reeling us back in. And that's a good thing because we don't ever want to make mistakes. We want to do the right thing, but we spend a lot of time. We're fortunate. I got a fireman, I got a school teacher. Well, he's not here. The school teacher's not here. Oh, from the high school. It's probably a school. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about him. I mean, we got this covered. We got the park district covered. We got the fire department covered. I mean, really. I mean, you got a public works director over here from Roselle with John LaRocco. When they want to do something, he looks at it and says, hey, that's not the way we do it in Roselle. Why don't we do it this way? I mean, it's a board that's put together that's amazing to have that much knowledge about what goes on around them and have them. grow up in town. Rick Geezer grew up in town. I've been here 44 years. <laughs> what? You have to say something nice about Matt now. Matt? Deputy Mayor, when I'm not around, he sits in the chair. I think Monday night I would have rather not been there and have him sitting in the chair. Oh, that's that's a good thing. That would have been a good experience for him. We have at the same area that Goddard School uh, Daycare, uh, Geneva Crossing Shopping Center, and uh, completions expected in mid-July. I don't even sure what that was, but it's good. So this is the part that I like the very most. Is the questions. I love taking questions. Before I get into the questions, because nobody's handling it, you got anything to say? You said it all. I'll be getting my rear end ripped later, I'll tell you that. I can see it, the signs, I can see it now. Look at, look at, he's making notes right now, what he wants to talk to me about later. I'm not trying to override what you do, I love what you do. I'm fortunate to have all of you. But sometimes we got to make some changes in the way we think. That's all. So, any questions? Yes? When's the completion going to be for the village hall? Well, they're a month behind and a month ahead. So, they're trying to get us in before Thanksgiving, but I don't think that's going to, my personal opinion, I don't think that'll happen. I mean, it would be nice if they could, but we still got to, we're not pulling out of where we are until we're sure that everything where we're going is working. How many feet of wire do they put in? How many miles? About uh, 50 miles. 50 miles? I've been telling everybody 500. You just do the whole thing. <laughs> so go, and no wonder they look at me like I'm crazy. It's, we got 500, we got balls of wire. Hang it. Where's our IT guy at? 50 miles? I'm ashamed. I thought you had more than that. <laughs> That's a lot. When you look at the size of the building, 50 miles of wire. I just like to. Maybe just make it sound a little bit more exciting. So I'll have to drop it down. Maybe drop it down to 100 miles instead of 500. But I mean, when we went through there and looked at it three weeks ago, we were actually took the tour. There's balls of wire hanging every place. And when you think about it, we live in an electronic highway. Everything is done with electronics. Everybody has to have a computer on their desk. In my business, the only person that don't have a computer on their desk is me. They won't give me one. <laughs> They'll come and ask me to buy three more or five more or more Surface Pros or whatever they call these things that all my salespeople have, but I don't get anything. I got my own personal iPad. They won't give me nothing because they're afraid I'm going to screw it up. So it's like, but, but it's the highway we live on and the technology driven that we need to. We need to be connected with everybody. Even as screwed up as it could be, we need, still need to be connected. So hopefully, I would think by Christmas, almost guaranteed, but I wouldn't say Thanksgiving. It would be commendable if they could do it when they lost, what, 31 days or something with rain and cold and that they couldn't work. But it's, they're zooming right now. Once the roof went on, they were able to continue to work inside no matter what happened outside. And it's gonna be nice. 
the people in the shopping center there can't wait for that to happen because their sales were way up and then they went way down because it, it affected everybody in there. I mean, the, it just not the people aren't there. Now they'll be all be back or police go across the street and get stuff to eat. The people that work in the building, the people we arrest go across and buy more beer when they leave. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's like, you know, having the police station and everything, they're all under one, they take it care of it. Come on, questions. Gotta have some kind of, I don't care, any questions open for me. Do you have a question? No, I just oh. said they lawyer up with Bob right after that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's another thing. We're fortunate to have Bob McNeese right across the street. I know he's helped a tremendous amount of people in this town. You know, Mr. Wheeler the same way. I mean, I, I look at people, go to him for advice, and I know there's sometimes, and I hate to say it, put him on the spot, but there's people that don't have any money, they'll walk in and ask him a question, and he'll answer that question for him. He don't give him a bill. You know, now you can't do that all the time, but it, it's something quick that he doesn't have to do a lot of work on. Advice sometimes is as important as anything. He's been, a, he's been great for me to work with in our village staff. Questions? I'm going to tell you something. Um, how much time do I have left? <laughs> One minute. <laughs> everybody, well not everybody, some of you know, we're doing a Veterans Memorial. There's a picture of it back there. Uh, I'm not saying this because I don't want credit for anything. We had a fundraiser here that I funded, not the village, I funded the fundraiser because I believe, and I've never served in the military, but I believe it's the right thing to do. We made up 50 baskets, where's, where's the fell call? How many baskets do we have? We teamed up with the park district with Jim Ruder and Pam, and it all started. I won a few bucks in the lottery, and I stopped and wrote a check out to some of the food banks and the churches that do stuff. Just gave back, but in fact, I gave back more than what I won. I don't know how I did that, but I did. <laughs> and sitting with Pam and, and Jim, they come up. I, I don't know how it came out, but we ended up having a fundraiser. And I said, you know, I got to do something. We have to do something to get more money because we're way behind. And I want to get this project done. When one of the soldiers said to me, I'll mortgage my house and pay the difference, but I want it done before I die, rip my heart out that we would have to think in the community this size with the businesses that are here, anybody would want to do that. I just said that can happen. And we raised at that fundraiser a little over $20,000. 32 actually. How much? 32,000? Really? You've been what happened to the other 12? <laughs> <laughs> see, that's why I like working with them, see? I gotta pull their number up. If I know it was 32, I would have said 40. <laughs> but the relationship that we have to be able to work with the park district, to be able to work with the library, to be able to work with the fire district, to be able to work with everybody around us is, is, is to me, it's like what it's all about. I mean, our cops are working out of Glendale Heights for a dollar. A dollar. There was a time when that mayor and this mayor couldn't even talk to each other. They hated each other. And that mayor stepped right up for our police department and let us work out of their place for a dollar as long as we're there. And that's phenomenal. That's what it's all about. But that's how you work together. That's how you get things done. So last night I came up with this idea at a big fundraiser I was at. I'm going to do another one. But I'm going to do it different. We're going to sell tables. Somebody said to me, why don't you have fundraisers like the rest of the mayors do? I've never had a fundraiser. Never, ever. I ran seven times from the fire district, the village trustee, three times for mayor. I've never had a fundraiser. I spend what I can afford to spend, and I have enough people to show up when we're going to put signs up or when we're going to hang stuff on doors or whatever we're going to do. I don't even know who they are. We did it at my building the last time we didn't have to do anything. Nobody ran against any of us. The time before that, I mean, it was, it was I had people show up. I tell them, write, write their name down. I don't even know who they are. I had like 130 people show up to help, to make things happen. And that's what this community is about. So we're going to do another fundraiser, but we're going to do it a little different. I'm going to lean on some of the businesses, and we're going to try and raise more money. I figure maybe a $50 fee. I haven't even talked to the Park District about it because they have the 501c3. They're handling that. But I want to do it a little different. 
want to figure out what we can give back to the food banks. I watch my staff every Thursday night, all concert series, selling tickets, Rick Hughes walking around, Matt McCarthy, Greg Swarzy, our clerk. Everybody's out there trying to raise money. We give back, what, $300, $400, whatever. How much do we give this year? I don't even know. Whatever it is, it's not a lot of money. A total of a couple of thousand, yeah. So you split that up between the people that we give the money to. It's really not a lot of money. But they're so appreciative getting that little bit amount of money. I figured if we could do this a little different, I've got friends that are entertainers, I mean, but I'm not going to have it in Carol Stream, and I don't want to offend anybody. I want to either do it at Medina Shriners or Bloomingdale Golf Course because they're friends of mine. They'll work with me on the food. They won't rip me on the food, not saying that anybody else would. I know they'll work with me because we do a lot of fundraisers in those two places, the group that I run with. And that's how you make money. So we're going to figure this out how we could do this. And then I'm going to put a lot of pressure on a lot of the business community that we don't put the pressure on to come out and enjoy a night, be a great meal. I'm going to try and get maybe Tony Spavone to come. I'm not paying him. If you don't want to come, then I won't invite him. <laughs> Honestly, it's a fundraiser. And we're giving the money all back. But I want to finish that. That will be what I want to finish. Not for me. Nothing for me. But for the people that deserve it, which is all of our people that were in the armed forces. They deserve it. That's what that's what we need to do. And and at the right place at the town center. That's where it should be. So before I end, uh, anybody have any questions before I end? Pardon me? I think you did such a great job, and no one, no one wants to ask questions because you covered everything. Well, let me tell you how I look so good. It's because of my staff. It's because of my trustees. It's because of the people that, that I get to work with that I'm blessed to have the group that I have here and in my business. I mean, they have put a sign on my door, we support the mayor. They don't care what I do, they support me. Not because they're my employees, they really believe that we do the right thing, and that's important to me. Because we don't always hear that. We get people to come and complain. You know, so four people complain and 30,000 benefit by it. And that's the way we have to continue to look at it. So I want to thank everybody for coming out today. I want to thank my trustees for being here. They show me an enormous amount of support, and I can't, sometimes I'm overwhelmed with it, and I appreciate it. I took some time off this winter and missed some meetings, and. Trustee McCarthy filled in and the rest of the board members did what they had to do and things ran smooth today with the electronic highway, I call it. I got my iPad and I got my phone. If they have a problem, I need to fly home. It takes me two and a half hours to get back. They have, I don't know how many flights coming out of Florida. I could be back the same night or the next day. But with the staff that I have and with the board that I have, I, don't have, I didn't have to do that this winter. But if there was a problem, I would come back without a doubt. But I don't like to miss more than one meeting a month. And then I like to be at the Water Commission meetings because it's so important to all of us in DuPage County. So with that, I'd like to say thank you all for being here today. God bless you all, and everybody be careful on their way home. Thank you. Don't speak out of time, sir.